it's for corresponding angles. Okay, corresponding. Kind of corresponding is almost like a word for it means that it matches. Okay, they're the same. Uh, so corresponding angles are in the same position relative to a parallel line and the transversal. So on your paper there, you see several examples there of co what we call corresponding angles. With your blue paper and your wax paper, what you can do is you can take your wax paper and you can uh, put that parallel line on the parallel line on the bottom, and whichever ones overlap are corresponding angles. Okay, so one and A are corresponding angles. Two and B are corresponding angles. Three and C and four and D are what we call corresponding angles, and they're the exact same angle, so they have the same measure. Okay, they have the exact same measure. It's because they are the exact same angle. They're just in different. Uh, on different parallel lines, but they're created the same way. Okay, now what we call alternate interior angles, okay, um, interior meaning inside the parallel lines, and alternate meaning on opposite sides of the transversal, okay, opposite sides of the transversal inside of the parallel lines because they're interior angles. So you see a couple of different examples there. Now, um, what do y'all think uh, is the relationship between their measure? It's the same, okay? It is the same. Now, here's the reason. Take your wax paper, okay? Slide it down uh, to the bottom parallel line. And what we would consider alternate interior angles, so for example, uh, 3 and A, if you overlap those two parallel lines, what's the relationship between 3 and A? What can we also call this if we overlap them? Take a black paper, put it on the bottom parallel line. What's the relationship between 3 and A? They're vertical. And we know vertical angles have the same measure. That's why alternate interior <coughs> angles are congruent or they have the same measure because technically they have this vertical angle relationship to each other. Okay? Now I know you may be wondering why am I making you come up with this? Because I don't want you to just learn this list of rules. I want you to understand why alternate interior angles are congruent. It's not because it's just geometry's magic, okay? Uh, it's because of these relationships, okay? All right, same side interior, okay? So they are also inside the parallel lines because they are interior, and they're on the same side of the transversal. Okay, um, now I've kind of given it away by the sum is. Obviously, they have a sum. Okay, but let's figure out why they have a sum and what their sum is. Do the same thing, slide your wax paper down. Um, some same side interior angles would be like 4 and A. What do 4 and A form when you overlap those two lines? A line, okay, they form a linear pair. So their sum is 180 degrees. That's why. Because when you move that top parallel line down, those two angles form a linear pair, so their sum is 180 degrees. So kind of the way that I remember is same side sum, kind of rolls there, same side has a sum of 180 degrees. Alternate exterior. So exterior means they are outside of our parallel lines and they are on opposite sides of the transversal. So you see some examples there. They also have the same measure because like our alternate interior angles, they form vertical angles. So they have the same measure. So opposite sides of the transversal outside of the parallel lines, alternate exterior. They have the same. So our two alternates, the alternate exterior and the alternate interior, have the same measure. Uh, if you have same side interior or for that
that matter, same side exterior, okay, those have a sum of 180 degrees. Uh, now, before we practice on the worksheets, let's look at uh, a couple more examples here. Let's find the measure of the indicated angle. So we need to recognize the relationship first. Okay, I'm just going to number these so you know which ones I'm talking about. I should have done that before, but I didn't. Okay, so the one that I have in order, number one, top left. Okay, what do we call those angles right there? Alternate interior. They are on opposite sides of the transversal and they're inside of the parallel lines. Our alternate interior angles have the same measure. So angle B that they're asking us about there it has a measure of 89 degrees. How about number two? What do we call those? Alternate interior, they are the same. Okay, so they have the same measure, 73 degrees. How about number three there, the one with 144 degrees? Those are corresponding. Okay, those are corresponding. They're in the same position relative to the parallel lines and to the transversal. Corresponding angles are congruent. So that is 144 as well. Number four also corresponding. So that's 138 degrees. How about number five? Alternate exterior. Very good. They're on opposite sides of the transversal and they're outside of the parallel lines. So alternate have the same measure. 144 degrees. Number six is also alternate exterior. So that angle is also 83 degrees. How about number seven? Same side interior. So what is the missing angle? Fifty-five degrees. It's 125 plus 55 is 180. Okay. Same principle. We're just going to have to solve for x here. We've got 92 degrees and 6x plus 2. If you can't read that on your paper, I apologize. I realized after image copies that you couldn't really see it there, but that well. 92 and 6x plus 2. What do we do? Set them equal to each other or add them to 180? Equal to each other because they're alternate interior. So 92 is equal to 6x plus 2. Subtract 2 from both sides. 90 is equal to 6x. Divide by 6. x is equal to 15. Now just as a reminder, 15 is not the measure of the angle. 15 is the value of x that makes that angle equal 92 degrees. Okay. Uh, next one, 5x plus 3 is the angle on the top parallel line, and 113 is the angle on the bottom parallel line. Do we set them equal, or are we summing them? Equal, because what kind of angles are they? Corresponding. Okay, we set them equal to each other. So we subtract 3 from both sides. 5x is equal to 110. x is equal to 22 because there are 22 nickels and a dollar and 10 cents. If you've never looked at it that way, money sometimes helps with division. Okay, that last one has 148 degrees. Up at the top and 4x down at the bottom. What kind of angles are those? Alternate exterior. Alternates always are equal. 148 is equal to 4x. Divide both sides by 4. We get uh, 37. Is that right? Yeah, 37. How about 
this last one. X plus 82 and X plus 112 equal or summing? Sum it, okay, because those are same side. Same side is the sum. X plus 82 plus X plus 112 is equal to 180. Combine like term first. X plus X is 2X. 82 plus 112 is 194. So we subtract the 194 from both sides. 2x is equal to negative 14. Divide by 2, x is equal to negative 7. Now we cannot have a negative angle measure, but our variable can be negative. And if you're a little concerned about the fact that you've got a negative number, plug it in. Okay, plug it in and find out what those angle measures are and make sure that they do indeed add to give you um, 180. So negative 7 plus 82 is 75 and uh, uh, negative 7 plus 112 is 105 and those two together do give us 180 degrees. Okay? Alright, um, these are not on your worksheet, but I wanted to show you this really quickly. Okay, I want us to find, this is just another way of phrasing these questions. Find the value of x that makes these lines parallel. Okay, so it's the same concepts that we've been using. It's just they're not telling you that these two lines are parallel. They're saying, well, what would have to be true about this relationship? in order for these two lines to be parallel, okay? So what would have to be true about those two angles that are labeled there? For these to be parallel lines, those two angles would have to be equal, right? Because they're corresponding angles, so they would have to be equal to each other. And then we would simply have to solve for x, so subtract the 11x from both sides, then subtract the 2. So if x were equal to 9, then those two angles would be equal to each other, and if those two angles are equal to each other, they're corresponding angles, so those are parallel lines. Okay? What about example 2 that I have here? We would have to add them together and they would have to equal 180 because uh, they look like they are same side interior angles. So when we combine like terms, 10x plus 4x is 14x. 10 plus 2 is 12. So 14x is equal to 168. And when we divide that by 14, 12. Okay, so if x is 12, then those two angles added together will equal 180, which means that they are same side interior angles, which means that those two lines are parallel. Okay? Questions? Okay, so let's see.